Isaiah 40, 26, lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. So Jesus says when we see all these things come to pass, he says lift up your lift up your heads because your salvation draws nigh and God is telling us lift up your eyes on high and behold who hath created these things. He's talking about the starry host of heaven. Misunderstanding ancient astronomy and astrology. So Satan has perverted the biblical astronomy, astronomy and caused Christians to run from the word astrology. The reason for that is because of the, div the divination of the terrestrial affairs of man is uh, clearly warned against in the Bible. And uh, it's based on the celestial events, uh, which is a satanic deception. But the history of Chaldean astrology as a rule was only about the reign of the king or the nation as a whole and never about individuals themselves. The astrologers and astronomers of antiquity served priestly duties and were not subject to individual interpretations of men's lives. So the common day astrology that we see is very much something which is a, a, a common day um, deception and not something which uh, which the uh, the magi were involved in and uh, certainly not something that uh, they did as a as a as a as a means to their um, to their astrology or astronomy which they were they were practicing it was just about the king and just about the nation records were kept when celestial events such as comets eclipses major conjunctions occurred and that seemed to coincide with major events such as wars famines plagues and the death of royalty so we have uh, left to us in um, inscribed in stone the uh, Babylonian and the Chaldeans things like eclipses and uh, the times that, that certain things happened because of uh, because they conjuncted with with things that were happening in the heavens and God says he sends he sends um, he sends signs so the sin God didn't want kings to rely on their astrologers or to worship wandering stars and the sin against him was to trust in the astrologers above what his own prophets were telling the kings and to apply divine or deity status to God's creation so so they, they worshipped what what they shouldn't have been worshipping um, and that was actually what the sin was so Matsaroth the meaning of the Matsaroth means the way through which anything goes and obviously we see uh, the solar system going through the Matsaroth, which is the, the fixed stars which are far away from us and uh, our solar system, our sun and, and everything that we see from our perspective goes through those uh, constellations. When we look closer, we, we discover that the Matsaroth was invented to transmit the earliest and most important knowledge possessed by the first fathers of mankind. The only true wisdom of man which is the Bible, are contained in the emblems of the constellations. By prophecy and its fulfillment, God speaks to man at once displaying his foreknowledge and his sovereignty. So the ancient uh, forefathers, the patriarchs and uh, the, the, the people who were the antediluvians, uh, wrote these things down in the skies for us to, to understand. And when, when we take a closer look at it, we start to realize that these 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 emblems in the sky were prophetic of the word of God itself and then the word of God was obviously prophetic of Jesus Christ and mankind so so we see this cycle of prophecy which is coming which which started with the things that we see in the heavens which is obviously the creation of God so that would make sense he spoke to our first parents in Eden when these emblems were framed in memorial of the revelation so the revelation which God gave to the antediluvians was the revelation which was in the sky the revelation which god gave to us was in the word of god but the revelation in the sky obviously predates the the revelation which is in the bible but it fits with it perfectly like a glove when you when you start to take a closer look the most primitive they are the most primitive hieroglyphics of the whole human race we see this we see them all around the world and unfortunately they become utter foolishness astrology um, is uh, is just uh, caused them to become obscured in darkness <clears throat> and the wisdom of the world has been turned into foolishness and uh, like so many other things we see in the world good has now been called evil they were known amongst um, all nations and in all ages we see them throughout ancient history from every single civilization of the world from the most antediluvian uh, chronologies of China uh, India and Egypt, traces of them are, are discerned most clearly and 
<clears throat> among the most ancient and earliest civilizations. We see remains of them in Assyria and they're recognized. In those of Egypt, they are perfectly preserved. In those of uh, Etruria, which is ancient Italy, and in Mexico, they're traceable, these same figures. This wide diffusion indicates a common origin, both of the race of man and of the symbols of astronomy. So that is, fits perfectly with the Bible, that we see this common, these common images coming to us from, from all nations. And as the reflection in the water doubles the evidence that the sun has risen, so the early existence of these emblems corroborates that of the recorded revelation. So they are a, a they are a, a, a dim mirror image of the word of God, and they're an ancient image of the gospel narrative given four thousand years before the ink was actually settled on the scroll. So what we should keep in mind about the constellations themselves, the the original constellations, not the ones that we have uh, uh, we've divided uh, equally into um, 60 degrees uh, to make up a perfect 360 degrees, but the constellations are not natural groups of stars. They have arbitrary connections of various stars by means of imaginary figures. They're often interwoven with each other and inseparable to the un unaccustomed eye. They're not divided equal in size or spacing. That should be in size or spacing. And the majority of signs don't resemble their description. Their order, their figures, and their presentation cannot serve any seasonal purposes. So obviously there are different harvests and different seasons and different different things um, <clears throat> which pertain to the to the weather patterns and the, uh, the, the crop cycles in different parts of the world. So there's no ways that we can att uh, attribute these things to the weather or any seasonal um, thing uh, as far as mankind is concerned because that's different all over the world and they're all deeply entwined with the figures of a serpent everywhere you look on the constellations there's ser there's serpents and snakes and things like that so it, it is exactly as we see in the bible um, the enemy <clears throat> is uh, represented as a snake so j herschel 1792 to 1871 complains that um, the the heavens are scribbled over with interminable snakes even so are intertwined the wiles of the enemy with the course and history of redemption so so j herschel was uh, the man who named uh, the the first seven moons of saturn which which were discovered nimrod's real intention for the tower of babel was uh, ast astronomical or astrological Genesis 11.4, And they said, Go, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth. There's nothing in this verse which relates to the height of the tower itself. It merely says, And its top with the heavens. So this alludes to pictures and the stars, just as we find them in the ancient temples of Dendera and Esna in Egypt. So when Babylon was scattered, these, these people replicated what they were trying to do in Babylon by putting the constellations on the, uh, the, the the tops of the buildings that they were trying to that they were trying to build and replicate in Babylon which is a planisphere of, of constellations uh, with with constellations on the roof and it was to be erected in the temples uh, afterwards so in order to pre preserve the revelation of what was the the, the Matzeroth and the constellations they, they they tried to do this um, what they would what they, what they did in Babel lest we be scattered abroad the face of the whole earth which is exactly which is exactly um, what we see in in historical evidence which is left to us so this is the common rendition of the Tower of Babel which most people have an idea of what it looks like but Francis Rawdon Chesney 1789 to 1872 who was a British uh, general explorer who wrote numerous publications regarding the area surrounding the Euphrates and the uh, Tigris River, writes about the Tower of Babel. He says, About five miles southwest of Hilla, the most remarkable of all ruins, the Burris Nimrod of the Arabs, rises to a height of 153 feet above the plain from a base covering a square of 400 feet, or almost four acres. It was constructed of kiln-dried bricks in seven stages, to correspond with the planets to which they were dedicated. The lowermost black, the color of Saturn, the next orange for Jupiter, the third red for Mars, and so on. These stages were surmounted by a lofty tower on the summit of which we are told 
were the signs of the zodiac and other astronomical figures, thus having, as it should have been translated, a representation of the heavens instead of a top which reached unto heaven. So this is more like what the actual Tower of Babel looked like, which most people um, aren't aware of. Ancient Babylon, Nimrod's tower was also called the seven spheres or the seven lights. Their observations were made in towers called ziggurats. They built observatories in all the great cities and reports were regularly sent to the king. So as, as I mentioned previously, the, um, the, the sole duty of the Babylonian astronomers and astrologers was to, to send reports to the king. And the Babylonians were a nation of stargazers and they kept uh, a body of men to do nothing else but report eclipses, appearances of the moon and sunspots. Knowledge transfer by social design. We have independent but concurring testimonies amongst all ancient nations. In the names of the stars, the very words in which the biblical prophecies are delivered are frequently to be recognized and the Matzroth was around a long time before the Torah. The Jews we see have kept the word of prophecy, so the book. The Arabs have preserved the names of the stars, which so remarkably correspond with those prophecies, while the Greeks and the Egyptians have transmitted the figures to which they belong. And that is exactly as described in Psalm 19 verses 4. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And corroborating evidence with facts. Twenty centuries ago, there arose a remarkable person claiming to have no father but him in heaven. He was born when the sun was rising in the sign of Virgo. He was born when Jupiter, the king planet, was directly over the king star Regulus in the constellation of Leo, which is the line of the tribe of Judah. And he was put to death at the time of the slaying of the paschal lamb at Jerusalem, when the sun was in the sign of Aries, the lamb which I'm sure you will agree that this cannot be coincidence. So what we have is a, a, a prophetic revelation given to the antediluvians, the patriarchal forefathers, Adam and Seth, etc., which I'm going to go through just now, which was a, a foreshadowing, a, 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 a prophetic outline, if you will, in the heavens of the word of God, which was going to come after the flood. And the more that you understand the... The implications of that, that the, the time itself is wrapped around the constellations and that time was to be matched perfectly with the prophetic um, word of God and the events which then fulfilled those, uh, those prophecies met up perfectly with the time which was written in the heavens by the forefathers of creation. It's just incredible. Now I'm going to go through some ancient historical reference with regards to the Matzeroth and uh, what we know about it based on the ancient forefathers and their writings. The earliest positive evidence of the primeval existence of the sign is in the Chinese annals where it is said that the Emperor Yeo, 2317 years before the Christian era, divided the 12 signs of the zodiac by the 28 mansions but it's not said that he invented them. The Egyptians, on whose early monuments the signs are found, acknowledge that they uh, received their astronomy from the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans attribute their science of astronomy to Oannes, who is supposed to be Noah. The Arabs and the Brahmins, among whom astronomy was early cultivated, seem to have uh, derived it from Abraham. The Greeks suppose their imperfect knowledge of the subject came through the Egyptians and the Chaldeans. And the Romans are thought to have received it through the Etrurians or the ancient Italians, the names of the signs still in use among the European nations. The early Greek poet Hesiod, 750 BC, is said to have made use of Assyrian records and he mentions some of the constellations by the names that they still now bear. And the later Greek poet Eratus described the constellations such as we now have them and by equivalent names. So they've always been they've always been called the same things. They've always had the same images, and um, the uh, the origin has never been claimed by anybody. He gave neither history nor conjecture as to their date, their meaning, nor their origin. They were to him as they are to us, uh, 
of immemorial antiquity. So continuing ancient historical reference, no attempt is made by any of these writers to explain the figures. No attempt is made to assign any inventor to them. No, no claim has been made to the matter of. None of these earlier writers allude to any tradition concerning the meanings of the names, the emblems of the constellations, nor as to where, when, or by whom they were originated. It's a complete mystery. Ancient uh, Jewish, Persian, and uh, Arabian writers preserve that the tradition uh, that the family of Seth, Adam, Seth, and Enoch invented the uh, astronomical sciences, and the Egyptians attributed to Seth. Plutarch uh, from AD 46 to 120 mentions Seth, to whom the third day of the five of the Epact was dedicated as worshipped in Egypt. So they actually worshipped Set in Egypt because he was said to be the third son of Set, the father and the mother of the gods. So uh, using uh, Flavius Josephus, the um, renowned, famous uh, Jewish historian who, who left us so much uh, valuable information in his writings, um, probably gives us the best idea chronologically of how the, um, the astrological sciences were, were delivered to us. So he first starts off on, on Adam and Seth um, in Antiquities chapter 2. They also were the inventors of that peculiar sort of wisdom which is concerned with the heavenly bodies and their order, and that their inventions might not be lost before they were sufficiently known upon Adam's prediction that the world was to be destroyed at one time by the force of fire and an, another time by the violence and quantity of water. So um, Flavius starts off by telling us that it was Adam and Seth who created astronomy and the... Um, the Matzeroth. He then goes on uh, la later on about Noah. He says uh, in Antiquities chapter 3, And besides, God afforded them a longer life on, earth, on account of their virtue, and the good use they made of it in astron astronomical and geometrical discoveries, which would not have afforded the time for foretelling the periods of the stars unless they had lived 600 years, for the great year is completed in that interval. Now I have for witness to what I have said, all those that have written antiquities, both among the Greeks and the barbarians. So Josephus is telling us that he, he, he has record and reference to the, the fact that it was Noah who uh, delivered to us astronomy and uh, that he lived uh, up to uh, a thousand years. Well, the antediluvians lived up to uh, a thousand years because they could record what happened uh, in the heavens astronomically because they lived for so long. So a great year is up to 600 years. Then Josephus later on um, in Antiquities uh, talks about Abraham. So he's, he follows this, this astronomy throughout his, his writings. And he says in Antiquities chapter 8, For as, whereas the Egyptians were formerly addicted to different customs and despised one another's sacred and accustomed rites, and were very angry with one another on that account. Abraham conferred with each of them, and confuting the reasonings they made such use of, every one of their own practices, he demonstrated that such reasonings were vain and void of truth, whereupon he was admired by them. So Abraham was admired by the Egyptians, and Abraham was a very, very rich man. Um, and in those conferences, as a very wise man, as, as one of great sagacity or, or wisdom, we need discoursed on any subject he undertook, and this not only in understanding, but in persuading other men also to assent to him. He communicated to them arithmetic and delivered to them the science of astronomy. For before Abraham came into Egypt, they were unacquainted with those parts of learning. For that science came from the Chaldeans into Egypt and from thence to the Greeks also. So, so, so it was obviously Noah and and the sons of Noah and, and Abraham that, that, that had this, this wisdom of astronomy because obviously it came from the patriarchs, uh, or sorry, the, the antediluvians before the flood. And the, the, the history is clear how, how these things came to us. So the Matzeroth comes from, from, the, from the Word of God, from the Bible, from Adam, and it, it's, it's, it's biblical. Giovanni Cassini, who the Cassini spacecraft is named of it after, uh, uh, from 1625 to 1712, uh, he lived. He wrote, 
It is impossible to doubt that astronomy was invented from the beginning of the world. History, profane as well as sacred, testifies to this truth. So this is a world famous uh, astronomer, um, Giovanni Cassini was uh, the first to make uh, successful measurements of longitude uh, by the me methods suggested by Galileo and determined the uh, rotation periods of Mars and Jupiter. He refers to Philo for the assertion that Terah, the father of Abraham, who lived more than a hundred years with Noah, had much studied astronomy and taught it to Abraham. We see John Bailey, 1736 to 1793, who was an astronomer, mathematician, and a mayor of Paris. Uh, he wrote a, an essay called The Theory of Satellites of Jupiter in 1766, and he uh, afforded the unfortunate events uh, of the French Revolution and was beheaded by guillotine. But anyways, he writes, Astronomy must have been invented when the summer solstice was in the first degree of Virgo and that the solar and lunar zodiacs were of a similar antiquity. This would have been about 4,000 years before the Christian era, so right at the beginning of creation. The science of astronomy is said to have originated with an ancient and highly civilized people who lived at the time in about latitude 40 degrees and that they were swept away by some sudden destruction, leaving, however, traces of their knowledge behind them. This people may have been the antediluvians and the destruction of the flood. So the Matzeroth was uh, delivered to us by the antediluvians before the flood. Richard de Berry was the first man who uh, wrote a collection of essays concerning the acquisition, preservation and the organization of uh, books which are written. So the librarian, this guy was uh, the guy who, who wrote the first uh, thesis on being a librarian. He wrote, Catholic doctors have determined that the deep researches of the ancients before God deluged the original world by a general flood are to be ascribed to miracle and not to nature, as God granted them as much of life as was requisite for the discovering and the inscribing of the sciences in books, amongst which, according to Josephus, the wonderful diversities of astronomy required a period of 600 years that they might be experiment, experimentally submitted to observation. So this is this is well known that these uh, these the Matzeroth was delivered to us by the antediluvians. Um, unfortunately, it's been hid from us in these last days. So William Drummond, uh, 1770 to 1828, wrote: "The fact is certain that at some remote period there were mathematicians and astronomers who knew that the sun is at the centre of our system." and that the earth, itself a planet, revolves around the central fire, who attempted to calculate the return of comets, who indicated the number of solar years contained in the great cycle by multiplying a period. So that's 600 years. He also wrote, the Jews, Assyrians, and Arabians have abundance of traditions concerning the antediluvian astronomical knowledge, especially of Adam, Seth, Enoch, and Ham. It was asserted in the book of Enoch as Origen tells us that the constellations in the time of that patriarch were already named and divided. Now, Sir William Drummond lived between 1770 and 1828, and he is referring here to the book of Enoch. And we know in the book of Enoch that it says the words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and the righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, and which the angel showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw. But not for this generation, but for a remote one which is to come. So Drummond is actually referencing the book of Enoch here, because they didn't know about the book of Enoch. And Enoch makes it clear that the book of Enoch is not for him, but for a, a very remote generation and Drummond obviously didn't have reference to the book of Enoch because and we know that in the Qumran caves when they discovered the scrolls in Israel that was really when the book of Enoch came back to us and the book of Enoch where he's referencing talking about the constellations being divided is um, in Enoch 35 3 where where Enoch writes blessed the Lord of glory who had made those great and splendid signs you see Enoch is saying that the Lord had made the signs that they might display the magnificence of his work, works to angels and to the souls of men, and that these might glorify all his works and operations, might see the effect 
of his power might glorify the labor of his hands and bless him forever. So the origins of the Matzeroth questions, who was the inventor of astronomy? The traditional answer is Seth or Toth or Hermes or Enoch or Idris or Oena, who is Noah or Noah. And uh, answers by biblical e exposition say that it is Seth, the son of Adam, with Adam and Enoch, and uh, obviously delivered to them by the Lord. When was it invented? Traditional answer says very early, and uh, biblical exposition says at the first age of mankind. Where was it invented? Traditional answers say in the east. Biblical exposition says in or near the land of Eden, said to have been between Chaldea and India. Where, when, and by whom were the yet extant names and symbols invented? So who invented the symbols? It's, it's not known tr by traditional answer. What is the meaning of the names and those emblems? It's not known by traditional answer either. Why were they chosen? Totally and wholly unknown. And we can see that uh, the, the Bible explains the origins of the Matzeroth because the Matzeroth matches up perfectly with uh, what, the, what it says in the Bible. And then the 36 uh, deacons or constellations which are allotted. So each constellation, um, each main constellation has three deacons which uh, further progress the, the main uh, subject, which, which uh, I'll go into in, in a later video. Concluding the Matzeroth history, the science of astronomy was never known to exist unaccompanied by these figures. They've always been there. God gave the earliest of mankind a revelation in the sky, equally as important to the later word of God. Even of those very truths afterwards written for the admonition of those on whom the ends of the world should come. The Matzeroth is a revelation of God. Our antediluvian fathers have delivered them speaking as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Matzeroth is a silent witness in the host of heaven, which is partner and preface for the written word of God articulated at the beginning of the creation of the universe. And the signs in the heavens are adjoined to time itself and inseparable from God's schedule of salvation.